Greetings, I'm Squared here. Today we're going to talk about modeling situations using exponential functions. So just a recap of what they look like, exponential functions. When it's a growth model, looks like this. When it's a decay model, looks like this. Remember that our constant ratio, which I did not write there correctly. Let's fix that. <laughs> the, the A was the initial amount, and the B was our constant ratio. I mixed those up. So when I know that B is greater than 1, I know it's a growth and when it's not, when it's between zero and when it's a decay. And I can look at an equation and see the constant ratio and tell whether it's a growth or decay. So sometimes you'll see that on tests. Is this a growth or decay? Also, just a reminder before we start talking about R, which is a rate or a percent, how to change a percent to a decimal. Per cent means per 100. So if you have a 5%, that's 5 per 100 or 5 over 100. And we would say this 5 hundredths. Right, zero, that's the tenths place, five, that's the hundredths place. So I just want to make sure you know how to write it as a percent because we are going to do that. So you can just divide whatever percent it is by a hundred. Okay, so a percent of increase or a percent of de decrease, we're talking about Hun Hillville, sorry. Hillville has a population of 5,000. The population is growing at an annual rate of 15%. There's our rate. What will be the estimated population in five years? So the years is going to be our x. So this little piece right here, that's going to be our x. Sometimes it's years. It could be growing per minute. If it was a bacteria, per minute or per month, whatever it is. Whatever the time frame is, that's going to be our little x. So we're going to rewrite this equation. What value are we starting at? Well, it said 5,000. So that is our initial rate, our initial value. And then we have 15%. How do we write that as a decimal? like that, 15 hundredths. But we have to add 1 to it. So we say 1 plus 0.15, which is 1.15. And then it was time in years, and our time in years is 5. So this is our model for this situation. And if I want to know, then it's a calculator problem. I don't try to do that on my own. So we're going to take 5,000. Now here's where parentheses are really important, because we don't want to multiply these before we do our exponents. So I'm going to put the 1.15 in parentheses, and I'm going to take that to the power of 5. So this little caret key, I don't know if you can see it down there, that little guy right there. On this calculator, the next number will be to that power. So that's how I do it on this calculator. And it looks like it's going to be 10,000. So when f is 5, it's going to be 10,056. Now, we don't Usually when we're talking about population, we don't talk about 0.78 of a person. So I usually just leave the decimals out. I don't round up because 0.7 of a person is really not a person. So that's how I do it. If your directions say something different, you might want to talk to your teacher about that. For me, if it's talking about population, I don't count it. Okay, so we're going to talk about a decrease in population now. So here's this little, little mouse. I'm guessing that's how you say it as a pica. The number in the region is decreasing. So after five years, how many will be left? Well, the initial population is 144. My decreasing percent or rate is 8%. So again, I'm going to put my initial value first. That's not very many of those little guys. I'm going to take my 1 plus the percent. 8% is equal to 0 0.08. So I'm going to say 1.0. I'm sorry. I need to subtract her. My apologies. It can't be 1.08 if it's decreasing. So I have to say 1 minus 0 0.08, which is going to be 0 0.92. So that's going to, it doesn't look very good, but that's going to be my rate. And then my time is over here. So in five years, what will the population be if it's decreasing by 8%? And this is this one looks a lot different because you can't see the 8% like you could over here. You could see the 15%. You can't see the 8%. You have to know that it's 1 minus that. So it's a little bit different when you're looking at it. So we're going to put that in a calculator. We're going to find f of 5. So we're going to put 5 in for the year and see what we get. So we get 144. And then in parentheses, 0 0.92 to the power of 5. And we notice that that would be 94, 94 little guys. Um, and that is how we would use our growth and decay models to, um, it's often used for population. 
But now there's another model that I want to talk to you about that's um, used a lot in the banking world. So this is called compound interest. So hopefully you understand the concept of interest. Simple interest is when I just make interest on whatever money. Like let's say I put $500 in the bank. Simple interest means every year, all the time, I just make 5% and it never, the principal or the beginning amount never increases. But compounded interest means they pay you 5% interest and then they take the interest off of the new amount with the interest. So that, uh, the principal is the amount of money that was initially invested or that you initially put in the bank which is separate from the interest. So in compound interest, you're, fine, you're taking the interest on the principal and the money you got from interest. So that's what compound interest is. And banks, credit cards, all sorts of those things, they do it at different rates. Like some do it monthly, some do it daily, some do it even continuously. So you can do it quarterly, which is four times a year, monthly, which is 12 times a year. Lots of different ways to do it. So it's important that you understand what each of these little things mean. This is the amount after the interest is added. P is the amount you started with or the principal amount. R is the rate. N is the number of times per year that you're compounding interest. So if it was monthly, that would be 12. T is the number of years or the time in years. And then again, the number of times you do that each year. So this is the formula. So we're going to take our rate. We're going to divide it by our compoundings yearly compoundings. We're going to add that to one. We're going to take it to that yearly compoundings times time, and we're going to multiply it by the principal, and that's going to tell us the amount. So here's a, just a little graphic on the difference between compounded quarterly interest and simple interest. You see simple interest is a linear function, but compounded interest is not. It's an exponential function. So it can make a difference in how much money you get. So let's talk about it. Hopefully you remember what all those little lovely little things mean. So here is a certificate of deposit. For short, we call those CDs. So I can go to a bank and purchase a CD. I can give them $3,000. They give me an interest rate, and then I just leave it there for a certain number of years. They'll, they ask you to leave it there. If you take it out early, there's usually penalties. So we're going to initially invest $3,000 at 8% interest, and we're going to compound it quarterly. That means four times a year. So what do we know from this? We know that our initial amount, or our principal, is 3000 We know that our rate is 0 0.08, if we change it to a decimal. We know that our N is 4, because quarterly means four times a year. So it's really important that you know what all those things are. We know that T, they didn't give it to us. But right here, it says five years. So it says, what will the value of the CD be at the end of five years? So now I have all my parts, and I can find the amount at the end. So I'm going to take my 3000 and I'm going to multiply it by 1 plus the rate divided by 4 to the 4 times 5. And then I use my calculator. So I like to figure this part first. I just say 0 0.08 divided by 4, and I know that's 0 0.02. So I like to rewrite it like this. And then 4 times 5 is 20. Because I think it's easier to put in the calculator if I just simplify it a little bit. So here we go. We're going to say $3,000, 1.2 to the 20th power. And that is $4,457. And since we're talking about money, we always are going to round to the nearest penny. So five years at 8% interest, you would have $4,457 and 84 cents if you were compounding it quarterly. Now, if you compound it more often, you actually get more. It's not like tons more, but you get more. If you only do it once a year or twice a year, it's a little bit less. So keep that in mind. And I don't know of any interest rate that's 8% at the current time that we are living in. But um, it's still, you have to look around. I don't know what the going rate is, but we're just trying to do the problem. Okay, what would the value be after 20 years? So. I can do the same thing, but what would change? So you, you can't just change this. You have to change this, too. So I have to rewrite it. So 3,000 plus 1 plus 0 0.08. And now I have to divide it by, oh, I still divide it by 4. No, semi-annually, sorry. Now I'm going to divide it by 2. I wasn't reading very carefully. But now it's going to be for 20 years. Well, 20 times 2 because the number of times per year times 20, so that's going to be 40. 
So now I'm going to get 3,000 plus 1 plus, and then this right here is going to be 0 0.04 times 40. You can put that in your calculator. And now we're going to figure that one out. So 3,000 times 1.04 to the power of, was it 40? Yeah. And after 20 years, it looks like we have $14,403.06. So um, 20 years is a long time, but sometimes people will buy certificates of deposit when a child is born, and then they, you know, when they go to college or when they get old enough, they can check that out and make a significant little amount there. Um, the longer you have money in a CD, usually the rate is better. Not always, but um, well, it depends on where you go. But anyway, we're not here to talk about banking, just how to do these problems. What will the CD, what will the value of the CD be at the end of 20 years? I said, what if the value be, uh, did I, I think we just did that problem. Okay, so what does it say? What would it be after 20 years if the interest was compounded semi-annually? Oh, uh, well, I think we just answered those two questions. I think I was supposed to change the percent here, but I didn't, so we'll just stop there. But if the percent changed, you would just um, make this, like if it was 3%, then you would have 0 .03 here. So it's really not too much different. You just change the little parts that you need to. The tricky part is that you always have to divide this rate right here. Before you add it to one, you have to divide it by the compoundings per year. Alrighty, good luck with that. M squared, sign it.